Welcome back everyone. In this video, let us learn how to reuse functionality across components. Again, this is best understood with an example, so let's dive into the code straight away. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called clickcounter.view. Within the file, I'm going to use the vbase CSS snippet to create a component. The component name is click counter. Let's now implement this component. We know that a counter needs to have an initial value. So let's add a data property called count and set it to zero. In the template, let's add a button and bind the count value to the inner text. So button clicked count times. On click of this button, let's execute a method called increment count. This handler will be defined in the methods option. So methods, which is an object and the method name is increment count, which basically increases this dot count by one. All right, our click counter is now ready. Let's include it in the app component and test it out. So within the script block, import it, add it to the components list, and then the template. Head back to the browser, and we have the button with the text clicked zero times. When I click on the button, the inner text updates with the number of times I've clicked the button. So we have successfully created a click counter. We show this to the client and the client is really happy about it. But the client now comes up with a new requirement. Hey, I want another piece of UI which works very similar to this click counter. Instead of button clicks, I want a heading which indicates the number of times you hover over it. So basically, a click counter with click functionality replaced by hover functionality. Let's head back to VS Code and implement that. In the components folder, I'm going to create another file called hovercounter.view. To save us the time, I'm going to copy paste the click counter code and make the necessary modifications. First, we change the name to hover counter. Next, we change the button to a heading tag and the click event to a mouse over event. The text is hovered instead of clicked. Let's now include this component in the app component as well. So import, add it to the components list and then to the template. Head back to the browser and we now have both the counters. When I hover over the heading, the hover count increments and when I click on the button, the button count increments. So we have successfully created the hover counter as well. Now the client comes back with another requirement. They want an input element that counts the number of key presses. For example, on key up in an input element, they want to increment a counter value and display that count value. Now we can of course implement a key press counter just like the click counter or the hover counter. But we start to realize that we are duplicating code and not really reusing the functionality. In our click counter and hover counter, we have the counter functionality. We have the count value set to zero and an increment count method which increments the value by one. This logic could have been reused, but instead has been duplicated. So if 
10 different components need a counter functionality, we would be writing the same code over and over again. So the question now is, how can we reuse this code? Well, the answer to that is mixins. Mixins allow us to share functionality across components. Let's understand how to use them for the example we have at hand. In the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called mixins. Within the folder, I'm going to create a file called counter.js. It's important to note that this is a JavaScript file and not a view file. Now from this file, we export the reusable functionality. So export, default, and then a pair of curly braces. Now what is the functionality we want to reuse? Well, it is the initial count value and the increment count method. So simply copy the data and the methods option from the counter component and paste it inside the default export in counter.js mixin. Now, this mixin can be made use of in both the counter components in three simple steps. First step, import the mixin in the two components. So within the script block, import counter mixin, which is completely up to you. And this we import from the mixins folder. So mixins slash counter. Second step, we delete the functionality which we have extracted out into the mixin. That is the data and the methods option. Let me repeat that in our counter as well. And now for our third step, we mix in the counter functionality using the mixins option. So after name, mixins, which is an array, so it can accept one or more mixins. We specify counter mixin. Let's do the same in hover counter as well. If we now save all the files and take a look at the browser, our counters still work as expected. But this time, we are reusing functionality instead of duplicating it. Now there are two points I would like to inform you about mixins. The first one is about the different options that we can specify in a mixin. In our example, we have specified data and methods, but it is also possible to mix in computed properties, watchers, and even lifecycle hooks. The second point is about merging of different options. When we have the same options in the mixin as well as the component, by default, the component gets the higher priority. For example, in the click counter component, if we add a data property which returns an object with the same variable count, but this time initialized to 100, save and go back to the browser, you can see that the button count value is 100 and not zero. So it picked up the count property from the component and not from the mixin. All right, that is about reusability with mixins. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.